Hi, it's Player Ban! Hi everyone, welcome back to Sally Face. Alright, quick recap. We solved the puzzles with Larry in the ghost realm and now uh, the ghost of Terrence has come and says that we literally have to get rid of everyone in this building or else they're gonna like seep the darkness out of them and kill more people. So Sally has this knife now and he's gonna go around just, I don't know, like taking out people. Is this the right thing? I don't know. Oh my gosh, that's an option. Goodness gracious. I don't feel well. Would you help me get into my apartment, Sal? Please? Uh, oh! oh. Alright! Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> what is going on? Just what? Oh gosh, no! This is Todd's parents. All right, just get this over with. Sally face, have you seen our little Todd around? We need to talk to him. I don't think they need to talk to him anymore. And oh my gosh, did he just like stab Todd's dad through the ear? And Janice to the neck. Oh my. Oh gosh. Sally, what is going on? This episode has just turned so dark. He, oh my. Yes. Oh. Man, what is this game making us do? Hey, dude. Glad, glad you decided to come back. Now we really get this party started. Yeah, this, this is some party. Oh, jeez, he, he had a stabber in the eye. Okay, she was stabbed in the neck, and I guess he was stabbed in the chest. Jeez, Sally. Not David. And Sarah. Oh, not David. Hey, Sal, yeah, it's feeling all right. I think there's something going around. Sal, are you sure you have to do this? Everyone seems pretty fine now. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Poor David. Left Sarah behind. No. Oh no, they knew they were gonna do this to us. Oh gosh, why? Chug, he can't do this to Soda! Oh my gosh, Sally's gonna be so screwed up. Developers, what are you making us do? I'm sorry, Chug. You and your love for chocolate and soda. You and your love for ripping off Barbie heads. All right, here goes. Sorry, Face. Can I ride on your sodas now? All right. Well, uh, I guess that's uh, Sally's answer to that soda. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Right in the face. Right in the chest, Sally. Man, I hope this is a dream or something. Robert, you just, you just chillin', listen to your music. What's up, my man? You're looking a little worse for wear. Everything okay? <laughs> Would you say this to Sally, who's literally coming in with a bloody knife and blood sprayed on him? Well, at least he died on, on his bed. Goodbye, Robert. Oh, no. Oh, goodness, no. They had to do this to us. They had to. Hey, kiddo. There's some leftover lasagna in the fridge if you're hungry. You know, I may not say this enough, but I'm proud of you, Sal. Even though you walked into my uh, home with a bloody knife, uh, you've come a long way, and I know it hasn't been all that easy. I look at you now, and I'm sad about the man you're becoming. I think you've got a bright future ahead of you. I really do. I love you, buddy. Oh, Sally, Sally, Sally. Well, all right, time to get out of here. Something is wrong. I blacked down the treehouse and woke up in the temple. They had me tied down. There was something else there. I think it was the demon. 
They caught me and took some of my blood. There was a loud sound and I passed out again. When I came to, they were gone and I was untied. I don't feel right, Sal. I think I'm dying. It was around 3 a.m. when I got the next phone call from Todd. He was crying so hard that I could barely make out what he was saying. I knew Todd and Sal were in trouble and that they were at the apartments. It sounded serious so I called the police and rode over there right away. I got there just as the police showed up. On my way to the front door, I saw Todd running to the woods. I called out for him but he just kept running. I approached the building and Sal was standing in a doorway covered in blood just staring out. He was mumbling the same thing over and over. I had no choice. I had to do it. There wasn't any other way. I tried to talk to him, but he was unresponsive. The cops pulled me away before I got any closer to him. Sal is an evil man. He's not a bad person. He just needs help. Dr. Yunnan, you've handled Mr. Fisher's psychiatric assessment during his time in prison, including several months of therapy sessions. Is this correct? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> and what have you concluded from your time with the defendant? It is my professional opinion that Sal Fisher is perfectly sane. It was 100% lucid while he proceeded to murder the occupants of Addison Apartments. The elaborate story he concocted is simply that, a story. A tale to make him out to be a hero rather than a villain. He was so convincing that I even began to believe his story. I went out to the apartments to visit Treehouse, as I requested. There was nothing there at all. In fact, the further I poked into the story, the more inconsistencies there were. These inconsistencies, along with all the contradictory evidence, proved to me that Sal is not delusional, but simply lying to protect himself. Alright, quick question here. In the beginning of this game, there was the Dr. Yunnan who was, uh, I guess, questioning Sal. He went to the treehouse, but he fell out and died though, didn't he? So is this an imposture or is this actually Dr. Yanon and what we saw was not real? But but Larry the ghost saw Dr. Yanon die, so who is this? Is this really him? In your opinion, is Sal Fisher a threat to the public? Absolutely, without a doubt. Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, Yana, we have reached a verdict. In the case of South Fisher versus the County of Knockville, what say you? The members of this jury find the defendant guilty of first degree mass murder. I agree with the jury on the verdict of guilt and the, because of the severity of the crime committed, I hereby sentence Sal Fisher to receive capital, capital punishment. No, you can't do that! He's sick! He needs our help! Or order in the court! Three years later, Ashley had tried in almost every way she could think of to prevent Sal's execution and failed with each attempt. Now she sits in her living room as the news reveals that today is the day Sal will be executed. A deep sadness washes over her. It's then that an idea comes to Ash that could change everything, though she has, she has to act fast. Alright. Three years later. Larry, are you here? Please, dude, if you're here, then show yourself. We need to help Sal. He's in trouble. I brought some of your old music. If this doesn't work, then this is the last time I'm coming up here. Larry? 
Holy effing crap. Hey, Ash. You guys were telling the truth this whole time. Well, yeah, duh. I knew it. Well, I had my doubts, obviously, but I really, really wanted to believe it. Just don't fall out of the treehouse, okay? Huh? Never mind. Uh, how are we gonna help Sal? Oh, I have a plan. Just hold still for a sec. Ugh, dang, that's bright. Dang. Yes, I got it! All this time, we had to take a freaking picture. Ash, don't crash, man. Oh. Okay, uh, I guess I should be keeping in my lane. I didn't know I was supposed to move forward. Come on, Ash! You're almost there! I'm afraid you're too late, honey. They're strapping him in now. Wait! He was telling the truth! I have proof! Please! You have to wait! Just let me show you what I found! Hey, wait! No. No. Time of death is six thirty three PM. If I got the suckiest ending, then dang. Loving wife to Herman Sanderson, 1951 to 1992. Loving husband to Cassandra Sanderson, 1945 to 1999. Brought in pieces, 1969 to 1999. Ray and Janice's shared grave, even death couldn't keep these two apart. Son, husband, father, friend, 1977 and 1999. 22 years old? Hey, Chug. Missy, dude. I can't. Son of Lisa and Jim Johnson, 1976 to 1999. So 23. Okay. Never, they never did find Larry's body. Mother of Larry Johnson, wife of Henry Fisher, 1956 to 99. That's what, 43 years? Lisa was always so nice to me. She treated me like family. Husband of Lisa Johnson Fisher, father to Sal Fisher, 1947 and 1999. I can't imagine how much this hurt Sal. Son of Henry and Diane Fisher, 1976 to 2004. So that's what, 24? So he was 28? I wish you were here, Sal. Sorry, I haven't visited you in a few nights. Things have gone worse. It's been five months since Todd escaped from the institution. I hope he's okay. He's gone be under that dang church. It's the one place we haven't been able to get to. They're down there, I know they are, and they have my Todd. Did you get the rest of the C4 from your army friend? I got it last night. Have you found a way in? I think so, yeah. We should go Tuesday night. That's when they're least active. 
Remember our agreement, if we get caught down there... We won't. We're going to get Todd and then blow that place to bits. Neil, I'm serious. So am I. But if we do get caught, then yeah, we take them down with us. I'm ready. Good. At least one of us is. Oh, snap. Have you fed Maple yet? I tried. She's still not eating. I'll see if I have any luck. Do you need a hand? Nah, yeah, I've got it. Did you bring the new package to the shed? Yep, you think uh, you found a connection with Todd's work? I think it's something big, a missing piece I've been wondering about. I hope you're right. We're about due for some good luck. Oh, jeez. This is all notes. Let's uh, read it real quick. Todd, he's been infected by the dark. This has occurred in other people across Knockville and is usually brought on by the devourers of God. Other findings suggest that this process may also be able to take place naturally without intervention from occult rituals. At first, we were able to speak with Todd and we were able to get some information with him. Over time, the darkness spread and Todd lost that lucidity. Now he's escaped from the hospital with the help of the cult. Luckily, they want him alive, so he's safe there until we figure out how to break him out. In the meantime, we have continued Todd's work on finding a cure to reverse the infection and cleanse the possessed body. I believe we are close to figuring it out. We just need a lot more time. Mysterious Mailer. The cult is insider providing helpful intel, but who is it? And why are they betraying the cult to help us? We still don't know the answers to these questions, though we wouldn't have gotten this far without their assistance. They provided us with details about cult operations and locations, albeit in vague, quickly scribbled notes. Phelps Ministry It's not simply an old church that sits on Chapel Hill. The church is the entry point for the main temple of the Devourers. After the mysterious destruction of the Aston Temple, the Phelps Temple was heavily guarded for a while. Eventually, the security loosened up. It's our suspicion that this is due to the cult having indoctrinated the majority, if not all, of the local government leaders. We have to be careful of who we trust. Snap! There's a lot going on. This is cool, we get to play Ash though. Uh, no one has been uh, watering the plants. taking this photo. It was after Larry's dad left. Larry and his mom stayed with his grandmother for a few years. They lived down the road from me. That's when we became good friends. Man, I can't believe Sally died though. Oh, this room. Oh, Gizmo. Hi Gizmo, you need anything? He hasn't left your room since execution. It's like he knows. That's so sad. Anything in the bathroom? Maple? Hey Maple, how are you today? Neil and I are gonna get Todd back soon. We may have to stick him in with you, at least until we figure out a better solution. I hope you don't mind. I've gotta run out to the shed real quick, but when I get back in, we'll get you some nice warm soup. Alright! Maple seems happy. Oh, interesting. So Maple is corrupted as well, as we can tell from her being trapped under, under the stairs there. Let's see, day one. Maple has become a threat to herself and others and had to be locked up. A week later, day seven. Most of the time, Maple remains cautious and alert. She's grateful that we are working to find a way to help her. Day 11. The corruption seems to be active at night. Today we reinforced the cage and added restraints for everyone's safety. Mabel didn't love the idea of restraints but understand why they were needed. Day 20. The infection is getting worse. We're only able to speak with Mabel about 50% of the time. The rest of the time she acts like some kind of demon or something, driven by violence. A month later, day 32. Mabel has become difficult to interact with at all and her physical appearance has begun to change. Day 39. A week later. She started screaming during the night and didn't stop until her throat bled. Uh, does not sound good. 
Day 42, the screaming has continued for the past few nights. Luckily, no one lives close enough to hear it, and the basement muffles most of the sound anyway. Day 45, her screaming finally stopped, but she's not looking so great. Day 46, we can't get her to eat anything. Day 51, she's still refusing to eat. We've been force feeding her as much as we can, but it's very difficult. Day 64, about two months in, Mabel's starting to smell pretty bad. She's still not eating. Uh oh. This game, man. Oh, is this still? Let's see, four, zero, three, five, three, six, four. Nice. Well, I did have it memorized. I wrote in my note. <laughs> Just another achievement. All right, more notes. The final prophecy of uh, Sicily Gray. The blue flame, not extinguished, still flickers in the night. He that sees between worlds, child of the abomination, wielding light beyond man, pierces through the endless black, betrayer of our kind, resurrected by Asintna. His sword, blood of man, rises to protect the great atrocity and prevent the triumph of humankind. Notes. Sitali, a Native American seer, or origin unknown, previous council member of the Devourers of God, possibly of the original formation, Asint... Asintma is referring to a collection of three pyramids. I have obtained one of them and have been searching for the other two. I'm not sure exactly who the child of the abomination is, but if they're an enemy of the cult, then they could be a much needed ally. Interesting. Do we have to find who this child is? Yeah, I'll grab the package. We got these weird pyramid things in the mail, another package from our mysterious cultist insider. Todd had a third pyramid in the shed. In his notes, he says he found it in the temple under the old apartments. They seem to be pretty important. There are several mentions of our prophecy in Todd's notes about them. He was actively looking for the other two. I think they might be linked to you somehow. No matter how I turn these, nothing happens. I thought something would happen this time. So, there's something else I need to tell you. The replacements were sloppy at first, but they're getting better now. It's hard to tell a difference. I can't trust anyone. Those things creep me out, dude. They aren't human. I know what you mean. So you think that pyramid thing that Todd found uh, could help us find Cell? It seems like it. I pieced together what I could find about the old cult prophecies. And from what I can tell, there are three pyramids that will summon their destruction. All signs point to Sal as the one who can stop them. I'm not sure how or why, but it's the best chance we have. I always knew Sally Face would do great things. Don't give up on him, Ash. You have to find him. I won't. Ever. I just need to find the other two pyramids. Once I'm free from this effing treehouse, I'll help you find them. Larry, I don't know if this is such a good idea. What if burning down the treehouse only makes things worse? Trust me, it can't get any worse. I can't live like this anymore. Or, you know, not live, but whatever. I can't stay stuck in this place. You don't know what it's like. It's torture. I can feel it changing me. Nothing else has worked to break the binding spell. What if you end up in the black room instead of being free? Your soul will dissolve into the darkness. We don't know that for sure, and even so, the nothingness would be better than existing like this. Please, Ash, you have to help me. If I do this, you have to promise me you'll be okay. Promise me you won't fade away. I promise. There it goes. I went back to the burn tree every night for weeks. He's just... gone. I can't bring myself to go anymore, and I just screw up in a long list of my failures. This morning I went over to Neil's place, but... Hello? Neil, you home? I grabbed the C4 from Neil's bag since we were supposed to go to the temple that night. Oh, jeez. Hmm, the Legend of the Greys. 
The Green family is a tribe of Native Americans, but there aren't many historical records of them. Even though they are relatives of the Greys living in the Knockville today, their ancestry appears to be more legend than fact. It is said that their family was formed when a great owl swooped down from the night sky and made love to a man who was lost in the woods. Weeks later, a beautiful young woman burst from the inside of the man. A nearby pack of wolves came to eat the bits of flesh of the man. By eating this flesh, the wolves became in debt to the young woman. Over time, the pack became human and together with the young woman formed the first members of the Grey tribe. Descendants of the women are said to have the ability to see the future. The origin story is likely fabricated and then evolved over time. However, there may be a grain of truth to a proclamation of psychic abilities. The Slaughtering of Children August 16, 1984, 255 children and 32 adults were murdered across North America. However, surprisingly, it didn't make any headlines. The story was covered here and there, but not by any major news outlet. It is now my understanding that the call has something to do with this and was likely the orchestrator of the whole thing. A true, that could mean their reach extends much farther than we expected. A terrifying thought. Okay then. What do you think Neil is? Maybe he's in the basement? Check Sal's room real quick. Gizmo's probably still in there. Probably not in the bathroom. <laughs> nope. Maple, everything okay down here? Oh no. Crap, this isn't good. That sounded like the front door. Uh oh. Maple's on a loose and she's a power hungry lady who's possessed by a demon. Not yet. Oh. Then I guess we gotta check. The shed. Maybe, uh, that was Neil and he went upstairs. Or do you think that was Maple? Supposed to be going. There was a note left on the table for me. I didn't see that. Ash, they have Maple and Neil. You need to move quickly. The temple is slightly guarded today. Sneak into the entrance I told you about before. Once you get into the main chamber, you have to act stealthily. There are four pillars with insets that hold sacred jars. If you place explosives there, it's sure to bring the whole place down. Stick them behind the jars and they'll be safe. It's forbidden to touch those jars. Be careful and good luck. On the back of the letter, there was a hand-drawn map with the location of the jars. I didn't waste any time and went to the temple right away. Snap. Alright, I guess <laughs> this place looks exactly like the uh, underground temple of the apartments. Alright everyone, I'm gonna stop here for now. I guess so. Uh, in the next episode, we will I guess try to destroy this place and hopefully we will save Sally. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching. I will see you then. Bye!